Greetings, I am Laz. And I am Scandal. And, and let's, let's play, play a game, game together. together. Woo! All right, I am still going to criticize the flamingo costume. Like, having the eyeballs come out of the side of its head is a weird-ass choice. Is it? It's a really, really weird choice. And for the many, like, mascot and, like, furry and, like, you know, like, human puppet costumes that uh. I've seen, like, just cutting into the creature's body to just, you know, in an odd place to stick the eyes is a little weird. It seems like it's purposefully kind of bad. Uh, like, genuinely, yeah. like, that—that that is a level of, like, that seems goofy. We, we goofied it on purpose, but I'm like, yeah. why? What is that supposed to tell us about the arcade owner? Right? You know? Well, I mean, Francie's a little silly. And is it Francie's supposed to adorable. be, like, the kind of silly that is, like, accessible to audiences, or is it going to look... Like, does it does it hit camp or just look poorly done? Right? That's really all right. Okay, well, here we go. Oh, what the... Funplex what now? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the funplex what now? <laughs> This is almost too much to take in. Okay, I am going to point out in reference to Lily's Garden, the fact that they remove your character portrait and they remove the label so that you're not saying stuff like uh -huh. buzz buzz or what have you is so nice. It really is. Having the characters say the noises around them and stuff is just so awkward in Lily's Garden. Oh, God. All right. Uh, Gavin was a bit, a bit of a lot. Naomi was off the scale cheerful. I've met some... Really intense people so far. Uh, did you sneak into the employee section just to get my autograph? Uh, I need a shirt, don't I? Uh, I'm really gonna need like a label or a name tag but, or please. something that me or uh, no. Oh, I thought you would recognize Pinky from all the signs around the arcade. The blushing. A Pinky is the mascot of the Funplex, after all. Are there signs all oh. around the arcade? I didn't notice them. I didn't either. Uh, oh no, that's that's not what I meant at all. I mean, uh, I mean, I work here. You work here? Since when? About four hours ago. Uh, today? Uh, this morning, to be specific. Oh, uh, awesome! Welcome to the Funplex. She's You're so, so enthusiastic. Cute. Sorry, I'm like, I appreciate The enthusiasm, mm. like cheerleader, you are strong. I mean, it would have been way easier if you were just so enamored with the chibi flamingo creature plastered on every wall that you had to know more. I see. You could have stealthily maneuvered your way through all the games, sliding right on up to the employees only door. I but you are how did you get the door code? I, of uh, course! Just constructing the story. Uh, you would have collected the password on a piece of paper that fell from Gavin's pocket! Woo! You searched your heart and decided the four-digit number had to be the intel you needed. Let's see. Next, you needed to lie in wait for the opportune moment to punch in that secret code just to find me. I. You are creative and enthusiastic and a little just over the top excited. That story was for you, not for me. Honestly, Ugh. I really appreciate So it's going to sound silly, and I know a lot of the games do Go this, but it. I really appreciate this how distinctive these characters are. I was going to say that too. Actually, it's very clear that they're all very different personalities, and they care about different things, and they have, yeah, different levels of... She just went on a, 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 an aggressive flight of, like, fancy going, and you are the Mission Impossible, I will go meet the bird. Doom. Do it's so do -do. Do -do. I found the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's just that is very charming. So far, none of them run together, and that's nice. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with their appearances. Well, I will say, in in regards to the fact, so I love the voice acting. The voice acting keeps them from sounding really similar to each other because mm. of one particular thing. So far, they are extremely my personality screaming out the door. Yeah, they're all like, a, a bold personality. Yes, like, which sort of any... starts to make them blend together a bit. I was gonna say, there aren't any subtle personalities so yes. far. Like, your roommate might be the quietest one we've met so oh, far. No. Which is sort of funny, because like they, but I was gonna say that the other hand, they might have done that as a choice to make it easier to tell them apart, but the voice acting really does help. Which is honestly where uh, I'm also like, I wish they were all voice acted. It would be so good. It would be, it would be interesting. On the other hand, like, this saves a lot of money for, like, the budgets oh. of games and stuff like that, oh. to have it only be some of the lines. Like I said, desires doesn't mean necessarily realistically that it was actually possible. I also like how much it sets the tone to have a little bit there. Mm, because yes. whether it's, like, even if it's just those short little taglines, it lets, it informs you really hard to what, how this text is meant to be read. Right. And I love that because sometimes it's really hard to tell. And I will say props to the voice actors. They are all very unique and have very good distinctive voices and I appreciate it. They're that. like character. That's again where I'm like, damn, the voices really help because so I've always struggled with this thing even where I've been reading a lot of like stories throughout oh the God. years where Telling sometimes you're like, apart. you just cannot find... Who's talking, yeah. right? Or like they have seven names they introduce all at once and you're like, I can't tell them apart verbally and I can't remember all these names because yeah. they're not distinctive. Yeah, exactly. Right. It just keeps going and going she's definitely passionate about this fictional scenario 
Ash has got quite the imagination, all right. Uh, is that how I come across to people as a creepy trespasser? I, I think really, honestly, the, she's definitely passionate about this fictional scenario. It sounds very natural. Like, uh -huh. I recognize your enthusiasm. Let's do it. The way she just takes an idea and runs with it. A lot of people might find that weird, but I kind of dig it. Like me, myself. I've always kind of dig, dug that in people, too, uh -huh. where they're just like, and then this thing, and then they go off on a wild creative tangent, and they're really into it, and but they're not, like, dominating a space with it. They're just kind of playing in front of you, and then they look over at you like, ah, there it ah, is. Ah, joke, yes. And it's like, like, you can either invite in or not, but it's just kind of there. It's really fun. There's also the fact that I could definitely see somebody finding this to be gratingly irritating, especially oh, yeah. in regards to being like, I'm being very professional. Fuck you. What are we doing? I... I have been the person that has been irritated by storytelling. <laughs> it's like irritating while doing storytelling. Yes. Like I have I've been that one. Like I I don't know that I've ever been irritated by creative storytelling, but I have been I have been irritated by long-winded oh, realistic. That's not true. By long-winded realistic storytelling. I'm talking oh, okay. in person like in a social situation. I am talking about that. There was somebody that we worked with that you really had a hard time with sometimes when they would definitely go off about They weren't stuff. doing creative storytelling that's though for the most fair. part. But yeah, okay, that one specific person, for the most part they were just talking about stuff they liked and stuff that had happened to them. Right. And I can be really like, "Yep, I understand reality well enough. Thank you. Can we go somewhere else now?" Like Please. I can I can be that person. But I'll usually make it clear. I, I usually communicate before I get annoyed and I had communicated a lot. All right. I, I was I was going to say, though, however, that is a very complex a yeah. scenario, like a lot of them actually are. Shows a lot of imagination. I wonder if she's a writer or something. And how would you have snuck out, I wonder? Uh, and how would you have snuck out, I wonder? I, hmm, I could have helped, but for a price. Uh, hmm. Ashley finally realizes she's been babbling hmm. to herself for a good couple of minutes. Oops. <laughs> uh, Sometimes I get swept up in a good story. I mean, I gotta find some way to make this job more interesting. Uh, is it really uh, that dull here? Even though I've already established that I think it's that dull. No, not really. I just crave a different kind of excitement than beeps and boops, screaming children and, and broken machines. Uh, you are really painting the best picture of this place here. <laughs> okay, so I appreciate that they're like, you can choose things, but like, this MC is a little cynical. Right? Like, I kind of like it. Like, again, I'm digging that there is a character to work with here, that you get to make choices, but they are a distinctive person. But that as makes they me observed, happy. remember to begin with, is that mm -hmm. the more choices you make, the different lines will start popping up. So, mm -hmm. the choices you've We've been making... we a yeah. sort of cynical person. Yes. yes. All right. Person going like, eh. I'm a little bit skeptical. Just a bit. Aw, oh, jeez. I don't mean to be a downer. I just want to move up in the world. I've got things to accomplish, dreams to fulfill, cosplay to make. I want to play something fancier than a flamingo. Right? I, uh, uh co cosplay? Uh, as we switch topics, it's like she's a completely different person. Ashley's eyes light up and she smiles and I'm afraid I'll never get to eat. Yeah, you know, like dressing up as your favorite video game or TV character. I love it. Uh, it's so empowering to be able to make your own costume and wear it proudly. It's even better when people recognize what character you are. Honestly, props to the cosplay community for being super fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, there has been some radical things that they have done, and I really appreciate it. I I just, like, as just somebody who's never really participated in cosplay, like, I'm just like, dang, y'all. I have only done very limited cosplay. Like, um, the characters that are, that are relatively simple or that I feel like I can make myself look like really easily. <laughs> Basically, right. and so so there hasn't been a lot that I've ever done. Right. But it is something that, yeah, that I thought was cool as hell. And I've liked costuming my whole life. Right. Cosplaying is harder for me than costuming because uh, you're trying to look like something specific. Costuming, you can just be like, whatever kind of a bird this comes out as, that's what I will be. Yes, you I know? am. And it's very different than, I will look like Ariel, then I will be a mermaid, you know? Right. So, yeah. In Empowering, uh, really? See all these empowering outfits? That's an empowering outfit. Empowered cosplay for everyone. Well, and that's the other reason also that I think cosplay is really interesting, just in terms of like what people are doing. Sometimes it's a level of going, I'm doing this to be empowered, but I'm also doing this to take something back, and other people going, no, no, you're just trying to be sexy, and you're in a horror for attention. And you're uh, like, you do not know people's motivations or reasons, and all. it can be very complex. And sometimes, you know what? Some people want to look sexy, and fuck you. And that's <laughs> fine. Or they might want to look look sexy for themselves Self. or for a specific reason. It doesn't right? mean just because some, ah, oh, what is it? Cosplay is not consent. Just because somebody is wearing something doesn't mean they're inviting you in. That is the same thing with life all over the place. Yes. Your clothing is not, not an invitation. Nope. 
at all. Uh, granted, she has certainly had the power to stop my heart for a few beats. Yes! Wow. <laughs> Definitely! You want to try? Got a favorite game character? I can help you make your first cosplay if you want. Oh my god, Whoa, you're adorable. Everyone In is fact, so... I made this one! Uh, you made? You made the mascot. That's all right. super cool! Good job! I think Ashley is pointing to her flamingo costume, but it's a little hard to tell with all with her hands as feathers I, flapping against the hood. I made this one, pe -pe -pe <laughs> right? So, uh, Pinky is your creation? I intentionally? Yup. She looks pretty good for my first mascot cosplay, doesn't it? Y you mean like a fursona? Oh, <laughs> uh, right. Uh, and let's see. I'd probably stitch my hands together if I tried that. I uh, okay. Uh, if you're going to be terrifying, then yes. I don't know heads from tails, but I can appreciate it. I, uh, I'm not sure. Like we have expressed that we're not super like good at, at like physical craft things. So I'm, I think, I think I'm really like into the I'd probably stitch my hands together if I tried that. Sure, why I think not? That sounds fine. Let's do it. All right, stitch my hands together. I'm all thumbs when it comes to stuff like that. Literally, I, I get enough thread running between them. Uh, I'm pretty impressed though. Naomi was going on about craftsmanship of games. Clearly, you're digging on craftsmanship of costumes. Aw, thanks! It's nice when hard work is appreciated. Uh, doing my best. I wear it around the Fodplex to liven up crowds, get people pumped to play some games, and the kids seem to adore it. What does Honestly? a flamingo have to do with an arcade? I what doesn't it? What doesn't it? Uh, uh excuse me. <laughs> you bet. Uh, that that makes sense. Although the arcade has been completely dead so far. No crowds to pump or kids to be adored by. I'm still really hungry. P please. I'd uh, like to, to try uh, and eat, pickle. but I can't yet. Soon. I, hey, secret between you and me? Please don't make it so I have to forget <clears throat> to eat. Uh, Ashley motions for me to come closer. She leans in with the flamingo head almost run <clears throat> into me like real, like bonk, I'm against a giant beak. All right. Uh, glances around the room once and then uh, talks in a hushed tone. I did some repairs on Pinky overnight. I had to restitch the left arm and I was giving her the old test drive to make sure it doesn't fall off. Huh. L limbs falling off seems bad. Uh, Stare yeah. sadly at my lunch. Oh, it was. Yesterday I'm dancing with a little girl. Must have been like five, six years mask, uh, max. Anyway, we were next to Showtime stage when she took my arm and whoosh. Uh oh. Off came the arm. The girl instantly started bawling. Okay, I have to say the one Aww. puppet costume that I've worn, it had, um, it was it was a unicorn, and it was a unicorn mascot. Okay, right. And so um, I had hoof hands, but the thing was, is like they were these big blocky, you know, sort of cool split hoof chunky things. Right. And the thing is, is and then you have a sleeve over the ends of them, but inside of them they had these little grip bars, so it didn't because because you're holding onto them so you can emote with your own wrists by you know rocking them and stuff like that. Right. And so like if anyone tugged on them, it didn't matter because to keep them on, you had to hold on to them. Right. So they didn't just go on like gloves. I think that would probably benefit her costume. Then it doesn't have to be sewn in place. It just is in place. Right. Anyway, I so... I can see that. Yeah, it worked really well. It was like, because they were just, you know, like basically um, short gloves with a big chunky hoof at the end. And then you had, you know, a loose shirt that went over them. That's super cool. Um, but it was like, yeah, they weren't on unless you were holding on. Because if you let go of them, they just fell right off. All right. And the girl instantly started bawling. Well, uh, at least you were consistently scaring people and it's not just me nope ah. hey now i don't want that to happen again i feel so bad but enough about me what about you so you're carl's replacement that's what i hear i mean i guess so um the the new floor attendant i attend floor the floor is a thing i'm attending to when i'm not going into Cardiac arrest. That's that was very cute. I love these little segues of like figuring out what you're saying as you're saying it. Oh god, this is very charming. It's also a little bit much sometimes because it really seems it's a little bit like I I realize they're having fun and it's not going to sound entirely naturalistic because that was a, like I forgot to mention the last time we were doing that episode. I don't entirely find a lot of the dialogue completely natural. Like it feels fun and lively, uh -huh. but some of it is really a little bit much for me sometimes. Uh -huh. Or like, but See, it's I feel also like, still hilarious. I feel like as a character we are sort of getting an experience of being like we are nervous in this job yeah and so that is clearly a nervous character behavior right that lies is exemplifying going when when i'm when i'm uncomfortable i just kind of 
describe around the situation to sort of handle that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so far I'm good. I was going to say, it doesn't do, like, yeah, I feel like more of it is just a tone of the game right. than it is anything else because it seems fairly consistent so far. Oh, yeah. Which really, that's all I require in sort of world building or dialogue, like, style establishment is that you're fairly consistent. Not the type where you're like, everyone's talking like this. And then we'll throw in a pop culture joke because, and you're like, no one would have said that. Right. So that kind of thing. Okay. At least you're funnier than Carl, that's for sure. I can't wait to go home and tell Juniper I do have a sense of humor. She'll be so proud. I assume you've already met Francine, but have you had a chance to meet Gavin and Naomi yet? Uh, yeah, I met them already, although it seems like they aren't too keen on each other. Right? Uh, I guess I'm engaging in gossip, too. Also... How many people work at this arcade? I feel like I should ask. Oh, Ashley rolls her eyes and lets out a sigh. I wish they would hurry up and make out already. Uh, yeah? Wait. What? Seriously, so... Are they going out? <laughs> nope. I just assume the animosity is sexual tension. I assume that at all times. Right? All animosity ever is sexual tension. Done. Yeah, but they always bicker like an old married couple. It's classic anime cliche. The ones who fight always end up together. Mark my words, lies. Uh, consider them marked. Beep, beep. Yep, can I maybe, um... Beep, beep. Eat. Beep, beep, lies. Uh. What's that sound? Uh, Dret, I set my alarm for when my lunch break was over. Oh, you didn't get to eat. Which means I didn't get to eat Annie. at all. Oh, poor baby. Time to go back to the grindstone. I didn't even get a chance to eat. Thank you what? for realizing that. No. Because there have been so many times where we have run into a situation like this and you do something else the entire allotted period and then you go back to what you were doing and they're like, that and, and so good you ate that. And you're like, but I literally didn't eat that. I was just tugging. It didn't happen. It's sort of like Belle in, you know, the, the, the Beauty and the Beast cartoon. <laughs> she literally did not eat in her midnight segment. The whole she time. tried a thing with her finger once. Uh huh. And I was like, and then she died. <laughs> and then just no food. But I was like, that's, that's really cool that they acknowledge the experience that we're having and i'm liking that more and more about this game and i feel like i don't know if that's sort of they have a higher bar or if the bar has just been set really low based on what we've been exposed right. to of inconsistency in these games but i like that yes all right that's no good lice needs are calories you eat up i'll go watch the floor in fact how about i take over the ticket desk for the next shift there's a you can do my shift? job and uh, wander the floor a bit uh so i'm gonna have to wear that right fair enough uh thanks I guess. Ashley winks before her face disappears in the dark recesses of the inhuman mask. Wait a second. If you're wearing it at the ticket counter, then what is me wandering the floor? Am I going to bounce around with myself? Uh, As myself? Yep. All right. As I'm wolfing down rice in the shape of a little heart. Wow, it occurs to me that I didn't actually ponder my first impression of Ashley yet. That's adorable. Game mechanic just nod. Wait, we had a first impression of everyone else, but this one huh? hasn't done it. Let's see. She's pretty amazing. I like her enthusiasm about her art. I just got a lot going on in that head of hers. I just understand it all. Those are your only two options. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that they're clear. Um, but I'm like, I feel like that's such a strong dichotomy. I keep wanting a midly option. Right. I feel like we did find her pretty unrelatable though. So Ash has got a lot going on in that head of hers. I just don't understand it at all. That's okay. We do not have to completely understand, mm -hmm. and that's all right. She seems like a nice girl, but I can't get on board with her all her wild stories. I can't imagine always living your life vicariously through a fantasy. Anyway, with lunch in my belly and break time complete again, the second half of my workday began. I guess. Uh, I guess. What's the next shift at the counter? I'm not even sure what I know what this terminology is. Right? Rolling into the afternoon, the crowd starts to fill out. Uh, school's done, and late rising pros are heading out to their arcade of choice. With Ashley covering the desk, uh, the flamingo... Uh, what is the flamingo's name? Uh, uh, my job is to pinky. wander the floor, uh, looking for problems, or potential problems, or just making sure everyone's A-OK, -okay, I guess. Uh, but for starters, it's a good moment to collect my thoughts, and also, they're not going to know I'm an employee if even my own employees, fellow employees, don't know I'm an employee. Right. Well, that's the thing. I got off on the right foot with some of my co-workers, and on the wrong foot with maybe one other. Mixed bag, let's say, but not awful. I need to make sure I get along with these people. They're going to be a part of my life, one way or another. 
Okay, working relationships are really important. We've covered this in other episodes of like other things in our Let's Plays. But you spend a lot of time at your primary job. Oh, God, yeah. And like it is important to have a functional relationship with those people. It doesn't mean you have to get like like mm. be close to them. Right. But it's important that they aren't a total drain on you all the time. Otherwise, it makes your job basically a drain on you every time you go. This is also kind of a terrifying line, especially mm. under capitalism. Like, right. Ooh. And if Francine's willing to pink slip her grandson, well... I'm expendable. I should be careful and enthusiastic. Like, there's also the thing, though, too. So the reason why I say this line, particularly under capitalism, is really scary is that a lot of people basically go, you're always expendable. Mm -hmm. The capitalism relies on the fact that it always needs basically to have a level of people who are unemployed in order to keep its prices low so it can basically earn as much money as possible off the backs of the workers who work for it. So the, the, the basic premise in capitalism, um, and, and it working, um, from all the current knowledge I have and the research I've done recently, is that you're required to essentially have underpaid labor. Yes. And to be able to exploit people and create and, and have them sort of settle for being underpaid labor, mm. you have to have an unemployed populace that can always replace them if need be. So there's always that fear of you're replaceable and there's someone in line to replace you. So part of the capitalist model requires, especially for flex times like holidays, where they go, mm. we need seasonal employees that will only have this job during the season yep it requires there to be an available workforce that's not in the workforce right and also at the same time too i love this implication as well that going oh my god you do this to your family and i'm like that's called nepotism my dude well you that's reverse just be ignored nepotism, no no but you shouldn't basically though like be ignored for doing a poor job if you're related to somebody so it's going like wow you're willing to hurt your you're like oh that's saying to me that our character goes but if you're related you should get a pass almost in some way does that make sense what I'm talking that, about? basically like, it our sounds, character sounds going since we assume that you'd give more special treatment to people who are part of your family and we right. assume you have a good relationship with them then it sounds particularly cutthroat yeah. to um send off a someone in your family which i'm like no it doesn't it sounds perfectly like actually you're trying not to give them priorities over anybody else right you know? the thing is is but i can see where that mentality would come oh, from God, you yeah. assume people give your family preferential treatment right all right well uh okay. guys well thank you very much for joining us if you like what we do please feel free to like comment subscribe and also share our videos if you're having a good time with us please feel free to go check out our ko-fi or patreon got some yep. links in the description down below and i have been scandal and i have been lies and, and it was great playing with you, with you. bye, bye.